Hi, my name is Ian Buckley and you are watching MakeUseOf.com. Today's video is about the Raspberry Pi. Um, if you've just got one of these and you've got no idea what to do next, this video is for you. Today we're going to take you through putting an operating system on the Pi, um, setting it up for the first time, and a few handy tips and tricks that'll hopefully help you out in the future. So let's get started. For this tutorial today we're going to need a few things as well as the Raspberry Pi. We're going to need to power it, so we'll be using a micro USB cord for that. Uh, this needs to be plugged into something that is 5 volts and at least 2 amps. Uh, the official Raspberry Pi power supply is highly recommended. I'll be using my home power supply today. We'll also need a USB mouse and keyboard, which will attach to the USB ports of the Raspberry Pi, and an HDMI monitor, which is just off screen over here. Before we connect anything to the Pi, it needs an operating system. Now, the Raspberry Pi 3 uses a micro SD card. I don't have a micro SD card reader, but I do have one of these adapters. So I'm going to plug the micro SD card into the SD card adapter and attach it to my computer where we will now go and download our operating system. So head to raspberrypi.org slash downloads and we're going to use Noobs today. Now Raspbian is the official operating system of the Raspberry Pi. Noobs stands for new out of the box software. It does include Raspbian, but it's just easier to install. So uh, from the official website, you can either download it via torrent or just download the zip, get that zip downloaded and we will then put it onto our SD card. Once it's finished downloading, if you're using Windows, simply right click on the file and select extract all. When it's finished extracting, the window should automatically open. If not, just go to the noobs directory that's just been created. And it's everything in this directory that we need to copy to the SD card. So if you haven't already, put your SD card into your reader now and you need to make sure it is already formatted, but you just need to copy these files from here to the SD card. Once the files are finished copying over, eject your SD card from your computer and you can put it into your Raspberry Pi. So now that you have your micro SD card with your operating system on, all you need to do is flip the Raspberry Pi over and you'll see at the bottom there is a slot for it. Just make sure you have it this way around so that the tabs of the micro SD card can talk to the tabs on the board itself. And then push that in. Once it's all the way in, you're ready to attach all your peripherals and get started. So um, when you've got it set up, it should look something like this. Um, I've got my USB keyboard and mouse here just plugged in. Um, if you want to connect directly to the internet via Ethernet, this Ethernet port uh, here, you can just connect that directly to your router. And over here, I have an HDMI cable which is running to my monitor. So now that I've got all of those things in place, um, this power cord, I'm going to plug it in. And it's worth noting that there's no on or off switch on a Raspberry Pi board as standard. Some cases have them, but there isn't. So I plug this in with the power off, but you'll see as soon as I turn the switch on, the, boot, uh, the Pi starts to boot up immediately. Um, it's just something worth bearing in mind, especially if you're a beginner, because um, if you turn it on when you have the wrong pins attached together or something, you could maybe fry it. So just a good practice to get into, have it off at the plug, turn it on when you know you're ready. Now that that's booting up, let's look at what we see on the screen. So when you first boot up, you will see this screen. Um, so at the bottom of the screen, you can change your uh, language and keyboard language for the installation. Um, and in the main window, you have two options here. Um, you may have more depending on which version of Noobs you have. Uh, we're just gonna install Raspbian today as that is the operating system designed for Raspberry Pi. Set it installing and uh, just be warned, it can take quite a while, so you might wanna go off and do something else while it's happening. Once the installation is finished, you'll have a dialog box telling you that it's been successful. Click OK and this will automatically reboot your Pi into the Raspbian desktop. Now, on first boot, Raspberry Pi has their own setup. So um, this is where you can set your country. Um, I actually live in Germany, but I'm going to leave this at United Kingdom for now. I'll show you why in a minute. Uh, but this is where you can set your country, language and time zone. It's also where you can change the password for your Pi. Now, as standard, each uh, Pi's name is Raspberry and each password is Pi. By entering your own password, it's just that little bit more secure. Uh, that might not matter to you right now, but it's, it's worth doing. It's also worth noting that if you want to see what password you're typing in, there is an option to unhide it. I would suggest you choose a better password than I have here. On the next menu is where you get to choose your Wi-Fi network. Uh, once again, uh, most Raspberry Pi boards have Wi-Fi built in. Um, if you have an older Raspberry Pi, you will have needed to plug in a Wi-Fi dongle for it to work. Either way, find your network and uh, select the correct one and put the password in. As I mentioned before, you can get around this by just connecting directly using Ethernet as well. The final thing we do is check for updates. Um, it does it all automatically. You simply click next and it will check for you. Again, this is something that can take a little while, so uh, just leave it going and when it's done, we'll come back to it. When this is finished, you'll get a dialog box saying the system is up to date. 
Click OK and you can get started using your Raspberry Pi. For a little more configuration, we're going to go to the Applications menu and go under Preferences and select the Raspberry Pi configuration. So uh, we can make a few other changes here. The main thing that I want to do is just change the name of the Pi so it isn't just the standard Raspberry Pi. There's also an Interfaces menu here. Um, you might not need to know about this if you're just starting out, but it's worth seeing it's here because SSH and VNC on this menu are what allows you to talk to your Pi headlessly. And here I'm just changing the time zone. Um, as I mentioned, when I first uh, logged into the Pi, uh, I said I was in Germany and it forced me to use the German language. Now I do speak German, but I would like it to be in English and this is how you can do that. Um, uh, this is also where you can set your keyboards to your language if you haven't already done it. Each time you use config, it will ask you to reboot your Pi. So uh, click yes and it will automatically reboot. So that's it. Um, I hope this has been a good introduction to the Raspberry Pi and getting it started for the first time. Um, if you're wondering what to do next, I would suggest going to the main Make Use of website and searching for Raspberry Pi. Uh, we have uh, an unofficial guide there along with a lot of great beginner projects for people who are starting out on their Raspberry Pi journey. Uh, I hope this video has been useful to you. Please subscribe to the Make Use of YouTube channel for more weekly tech tips and giveaways. Thanks all so much for watching. Bye bye.